Hello again, this is Keith Slough from Christian Fellowship Ministries of the Church of God. These videos are, are uh, directed toward former members of the Worldwide Church of God to help them to understand what happened to that church and why did it fall apart. Some of the members have looked back on it and realized the church must have been under a divine curse. Not just something the devil did, but something that God allowed to happen. And what I've been sharing with you is the true gospel on these videos. Now, these are short 10-minute videos. You can watch them whenever you're, you're ready. Just, anybody's got 10 minutes. you got that much time at stoplights, it seems like. So you've got, a, you've got 10 minutes. I know our attention span is short these days, but everybody's got at least 10 minutes. And then you can stop and come back tomorrow and watch the second one. But watch all of these videos and watch them in order because you'll be able to get, understand what the real gospel is and what happened to the church. Now in Galatians chapter 1 verses 6 through 9, the Apostle Paul said, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you to the gospel of the grace of God or the grace of Christ to another gospel which is not another, but some would pervert the gospel. There's only one gospel. Now today you got social gospels. I knew a fellow who was a Presbyterian down in Charlotte. He said, I believe in the social gospel, whatever that is. And then you got the prosperity gospel that you hear about on television. Uh, and I mean, the Bible does talk about how to be blessed and prosperous, but is that the gospel? And then we have a, a gospel that is an announcement of a futuristic, observable politically organized world ruling kingdom. Now Jesus did come into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom. But Romans 14 verse 17 says the kingdom of God is it's not meat and drink but it is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Matthew 6 33 Jesus said seek the kingdom. Well you can't seek something that's futuristic. I mean it may not even come in your lifetime. We don't know that Christ is going to return in our lifetime, and he certainly didn't come back in the lifetimes of the people who heard him say that in, in uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. He, did, he told them, seek the kingdom, but it didn't exist then. 2,000 years later, it still doesn't exist. So what did he mean by that? And then I mentioned last time, Luke 17, 21, where Jesus said the kingdom of God does not come with observation. They won't say low here or low there because the kingdom is within you. Now here's the way the church has always understood that. The word within, they think, is a mistranslation. I've read the Greek text. I'm telling you, it's not. There's another place where the word within is used, and it's where Jesus is talking about the, the cups. He said, you know, you make the outside look beautiful, but the inside is bad. He said, you need to clean within the cup. That's how the King James translates it. <clears throat> you wouldn't clean among the cup, now would you? And yet people will tell us that Luke 17, 21 is mistranslated, that what it really says is the kingdom of God is among you. Really. A world ruling government was among them? Yeah, the Roman Empire, but that's not the kingdom of God. And, and here's how the, the church explained it. Well, uh, in this particular case, the kingdom of God refers to Jesus himself. That he was standing among them, and he was the king. Okay. Fine. So if we're to preach the kingdom of God and Jesus is the kingdom of God, then how come we're not preaching Jesus? I do on my radio program. I do. And you can hear it, by the way. It's on um, the Internet. If you're interested, I can give you some information, a phone number. I need to give you a phone number where you can call me anyway so that you can call and get information. Uh, I'll give it to you now. While I'm thinking about it, it's 704 area code. The number is 938 Six four one five, and we'll send you some information if you need some more. I'll be glad to answer any questions that I can. Seven zero four nine three eight sixty four fifteen, and uh, I'll be glad to help you and try to help you get through this and understand some of these things. So, if the kingdom of God is something that we're supposed to preach, and Jesus is among them as the kingdom of God, then what's wrong with preaching Jesus? People have said, and this is what we were taught over and over. The world's churches preach about the messenger while they ignore his message. But what was his message? Paul said, if anybody preached a different gospel than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. Now, the kingdom of God, the Greek word kingdom, basileia, means government or reign. In Jeremiah 31, 
And let's start in uh, verse 31. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And then he says in verse 33, this is the covenant that I will make after those days when Christ returns, says the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. Now, how does any government govern? Our federal government, Washington, D.C., governs by laws. The state government governs by laws. If you're watching this in, a, in another country, uh, besides the United States, Canada, and other places around the world, your government governs by laws. Well, the kingdom of God governs by laws. Now, God is going to put His laws in our heart. The word kingdom in Greek means government. Where is the government of God? Is in your heart. The word government is not limited to the word kingdom. With the four constituent parts I talked about last time, you have to have a king, territory, subjects, and laws. The word government, well, there's government in the church, right? There is government in your home, there's government in your family, and there's government in your life because the laws of God are in your heart if you have the Holy Spirit. So do you understand there is a spiritual aspect of the kingdom of God? Now, Jesus talked about the kingdom. Now remember, the gospel according to Matthew, the gospel according to Mark, and according to Luke, and according to John, is the true gospel. The gospel according to Paul, that's the true gospel. Anything that we preach today that contradicts that has got to be wrong. Now, have you ever just taken, for example, the gospel of John, looked at chapter 1 and said, what's the, what is the basic message of John's gospel in chapter 1? Then look at chapter 2. Look at chapter 3. Do you know the term kingdom of God is only used on two occasions in the entire gospel of John? That's right. The kingdom of God is mentioned on only two occasions. One, he's standing in front of Pilate, and Pilate says, Are you a king? And Jesus does not preach to him the gospel of the kingdom. He simply said, My kingdom is not of this world. He's, again, Pilate was asking him, Are you an actual, literal, physical king of a, of a literal, physical kingdom? He said, Well, no, that's, that's in the future. That's not of this age. The only other place where the kingdom of God is mentioned is in John 3, and I'm going to read it to you. In John 3, Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night, and uh, he says, We know you're a man sent from God. And Jesus said, Verily, verily, and that word means truly, truly, I say to you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Is Jesus announcing that a world-ruling government will someday come? Or is he telling Nicodemus how to see it? The man says, how can a man enter his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And then he explains what he means. So he, uh, he tells Nicodemus, unless you're born again, you can't see it. If you're not born again, you cannot enter the kingdom. Jesus' emphasis was not saying that a kingdom would come, but rather telling you how to get into it. Now, in the same chapter, just a few verses below this, he said this. Listen, on the same page. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. How can we say that is not the gospel when it's on the same page as when he is explaining how to enter the kingdom? How do you enter the kingdom? You accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Isn't that part of the gospel? But we were told that it wasn't. We were told that, the, that it's, only, and it's only an announcement of a future kingdom. And you want to know why there was a curse put on that church? Well, I'm just getting started on this, and I've got to quit. But John 3, 16, that famous verse is connected with the only place where Jesus preaches the kingdom of God. It's the only place where he does. And he tells us there, if you believe on him, you'll have everlasting life. The good news that Jesus Christ preached was that if you believe on him, you can live forever in the kingdom of God. Not just merely an announcement of a future kingdom. Did the worldwide church of God preach a false gospel? Is that why God allowed them to completely fall apart? Is that why there's so much strife and confusion today, even amongst the nearly 300 different splinter groups? 
I'm out of time. Be sure to watch the next one. Watch these in their series and tell your friends where they can see these videos. I want you to help me reach as many of these people as I can because there's, there's folks out there that are still hurting. Been hurting for years over the, the dissolution of that church that they had so much faith and confidence in. I want to reach all of them because you see, it ain't over till it's over, and it's not going to be over till Jesus comes. And then a whole new chapter begins. And so you can find that righteousness, that peace, and that joy today, but not just by believing about a future kingdom, but the kingdom that Jesus spoke about that's within. Be sure to catch the next video. They're only 10 minutes. Be sure to watch them all if you have the time. So until then, this is Keith Slough.